To get started with the Chison E-Bit, we'll start just by pressing the power button. While it's booting up, let's take a look at how to adjust the screen. There's a little button underneath here. Just push it, and now you can adjust the screen and tilt it to your best viewing angle. So let's take a quick tour of the user interface. First, as with most ultrasounds today, the user interface is designed around your hand. You have the trackball and then your most commonly used functions around here, such as update, which you'll use for various things such as measurements, pulse wave or color Doppler adjusting, region of interest boxes or gates. Change, we'll see how to use that. That also is for measurements and some other items that we'll go over later in the training. Cursor to get your arrow pointer up to select various things on the screen, to review thumbnails and other such items. Calculation for your calculation packages, distance for a simple distance measurement, trace for trace measurement, and enter, which is one of the most commonly used keys on the system. Here we have our exam function group, your patient, your probe or preset select, archive, your setup to get into the system menus, report page, exit, zoom, and this is a custom programmable key just as there are some up here as well. Print 1 and Print 2 are also user assigned for whatever printers you might have set up. You can use them for other items as well. Here we have a multi-function knob. It'll say depth, steer, and angle. To switch between those you're going to push down. Obviously they're not active in all imaging modes. The steer and angle will be for Doppler modes. Across the top we have our imaging modes, M mode, Doppler, color, Doppler as well as B mode or 2D mode. Over here we have our freeze key, save and cine save and again all of these things will be going over throughout the training. This save button is just for a simple image. Just press save and the thumbnail will appear there. This is for a cine review and there are many options here that on that cine review that we'll also get into. Flip the image up and down. You go to full screen by pressing this here. Press it again to go back. FHI for harmonics imaging. X contrast is an image optimization feature as well. Here we have our menu button where you can get to further image optimizations. I'm going to go back and press exit to get out of that. And then our TGCs for time game compensation. Across the top, we have keys for ending the exam, body markers, arrow pointers, comments, clear, biopsy. This is for a single screen, dual screen, quad screen, your volume controls for Doppler, an assignable F12 key, and the help menu is not active at this time, but you do have uh, this video and the user manual to go by. The rest of the keyboard is standard, but if you want CW Doppler, or Tissue Doppler, or Color Power Angio, you can click on those here. Up here we have soft keys. Um, in the user manual it will be like SK1, SK2, SK3, and these adjust these parameters here. You push down to adjust the top parameter. Here I'm adjusting the frequency. Dynamic for dynamic range. Your focus number, you can adjust the focus position by twisting or the focal number by pressing down. Add one or two. Compound imaging for image optimization. Uh, one note about compound imaging if you're doing needle guidance uh, to use the super needle feature that has to be on. Q image, another image optimization tool for automatic image optimization. You can choose various settings when you're doing the scanning to see what you prefer. SRA is for speckle reduction. In order to turn that on and off, you first have to turn off compound and then turn it on or off and then turn compound back on or off. Persistence is a frame averaging. Density for line density, just push that down to change that and that will improve your frame rates at the expense of image quality. B rejection uh, for noise rejection. Another again image optimization tool. And then again further if we want to go into even further menus we're going to press this menu button down. We could twist the knob and you get gamma which will brighten the image. Uh, image smoothing, edge enhancement. And if you click down to advance you get a whole nother set. Uh, for zoom, trapezoidal mo mode for the linear probes. Uh, 2D steering, which actually will adjust the angle and help you get an image if you're having trouble getting something, you can steer that box. Press down and I can continue to select ECG, up, down, invert, biopsy. Click down to get the biopsy guide, it'll give you this okay. 
say, okay, just making sure that you adjust that biopsy line. You have it on and off. Super needle for needle visualization. Now, on needle visualization, this line here is showing you want to take the needle and go abs just exactly perpendicular. And you can change that needle angle by scrolling down, click down, and you can adjust that needle angle to one side or the other depending on where you're coming at and what angle yet that needle is going to be on. Turn those off. Center line as well. And those, that's. And then we can go into utilities where you have some post processing things for the brightness and various things you can do. Also, here you have a keyboard light. There's a light underneath here for a dark room that will help illuminate these soft keys and some of the buttons down here. And you can change that intensity of the light by pressing down and turning it up or down. Of course, with my lights, you can't see it. Possibly you can see that the light is getting brighter or darker in here. And then the best way to get out of this is just to click exit. Now note that I did when I went to this utility menu, there are also some presets that changed along here where I can actually change the preset without hitting the probe button, which is something we'll get into in the next video. But instead of going back to that probe to select a preset, you can change these here and just click load. This is also where you'll save a custom preset. So if you make changes to the image and you want to have your own preset, you can just click save as and then type in your own uh, imaging preset. And now we're on a frozen image and again these soft keys change where I can play and pause my cine review. It shows 260 fr 256 frames. The speed start and end position where you can select if you want to save a loop you can change your start and end position by either scrolling to it with a trackball and just hit set start position set end position and it'll show you which frame it's on and basically all this is going to do is give you just a smaller loop to save so if you only want to show a certain part of that image instead of the entire thing you can do that and then save that cine loop by pressing the cine review and we'll again get more into that in the next videos now going around the screen obviously we have our chise on you can add your logo up here here's the patient id and the patient name would go underneath there your facility name, the preset you're using, your thermal indices, the probe name, I have the L12E attached, and the frequency that it's at, uh, your date and time. And now down along the right hand side, you have S FPS, which stands for frames per second, your gain level, the acoustic power, which we saw in that utility menu, the current frequency for imaging, your dynamic range here the depth so this says 3.7 so along here these markers show that my depth is down to 3.7 at the very bottom of the image FHI is for the harmonics imaging X contrast which we showed here you have normal and you have I unfreeze you have normal enhance superficial along the bottom we have whether a USB is plugged in it's got an X in it where you would if there's a USB plugged in, the X will go away. This is also where you would select it. I'd hit my cursor and click on that to eject it. Here it tells me whether I'm connected to a network. It has an X through it. Next is not battery, although it looks like it. It is showing me actually the hard drive percentage. So if I click enter, it's going to tell me how much hard drive space I have available on the machine. Here I've changed the language right now, EN for English. And here's a task manager, so if you are exporting an image and when we get to DICOM, uh, you'll see that this will show you anything that's happened and if there's a problem with the DICOM send, it'll tell you that it failed or, and you can ter terminate it, retry after you connect to a network or whatnot. And here we also have their battery status. We can click on that and it'll tell me the state of the battery and how much time we have left. Uh, about 107 minutes left on this charge. It's not plugged in, so if it was plugged in, this would be going up, just showing you that it is currently charging. Over here, it's telling me what the trackball will do. If I get out of this cursor, yeah, I'm saying it's going to give me a trace function because I must have hit calc or something or, dis or measurement. And also down here again, these have all changed when I hit the 
a distance measurement. My measurements show up here. And again, we'll get into these later on, but these are all the various things when I hit a measurement. Next, we'll get into imaging with the Chison EBIT.